welcome back everyone, Toy Shiz here, and uh, top of the morning to you all, Saturday, for the New York Comic Con 2024, at least I think it's Saturday, it's Saturday, yeah, feels like I've been here a week already, it's like Vegas, that sort of time frame where everything kind of fades into one event after another, but woke up bright and early, headed over to the Flatiron District for the Hasbro breakfast, Hasbro does not have uh, a booth they're kind of sharing one with the Pop Insider to kind of show off the Sentinel, which we will be talking about. Yet another Sentinel. Yes, I will have lots of videos in this video for you to see it up close so you can make that ever-present lingering notion of should I buy it, should I pass. Before we get started, again, I want to say thank you to the folks over at Entertainment Earth. We have teamed up for this New York Comic Con weekend why, you ask? Well, we are giving away a $250 gift card to Entertainment Earth. So this has been a running entry throughout the New York Comic Con videos I have been doing. Basically, yes, it is only one entry. You're not going to get multiple entries for multiple videos. But this is for those that haven't entered yet. They all go into one big shoebox and I will pull a name out proper. So as always, to enter... You could follow me. That would be fantastic. If you haven't already, you can give me one of those old subscriber little bell ringings, that little right there thing on the screen. That'll, that'll show you how to do it. But simply just comment below what has been your favorite reveal so far for New York Comic Con. That's your entry. I also have another $250 gift card entry contest over on my Instagram. It's separate, so $500 in total. Two winners, and I'll have the winners announced this coming Monday as soon as Comic-Con concludes. So we will kick things off with the Transformers franchise, and it's basically everything that they revealed at the panel yesterday they showed off at this breakfast. So this is from the Michael Bay Transformers Studio Series Hatchet. It's essentially a police car that turns into a, a dog transformer or something to that extent it's not for me i am very much a transformers studio series 86 anything 86 movies the michael bay stuff it's mindless fun let's be honest but it's it's not transformers it just kind of has that name to it i know a lot of people are gonna roll their eyes yada yada i love the the old animated stuff that's that's my Bread and butter. And how good is that new Optimus Studio Series? It's amazing. The Deluxe Hatchet will be a mainline figure coming soon, we'll just say. All of these are coming relatively soon. This one I am interested in, although I will tell you, this is now... This is now the, like, the well, I think it's the fourth, but for me it'll be the third Galvatron. And wouldn't you know it, in, in my eye and in, in how I see Galvatron... This is the color scheme that he should have been in all along. I felt like the other one was way too, was it fuchsia, purple, that kind of thing. This one is more along the lines of what you see as Leonard Nimoy in the 86 movie. Also, in a blooper, I totally knocked this Transformer over. So there you go. I'll admit it. I've got no problem. <laughs> I do it at least one convention each time. So yes. He went tumbling, nothing happened. It was just uneventful. But yeah, I totally took out old Galvatron. He turns into the cannon. Same exact figure. It's the same exact figure, just a new paint scheme. They're calling it Galvatron. I would have loved if they changed a few things. Yes, I'm on board. I would have loved if they did a new mold. They're not going to do that. It's just going to do a quick repaint. Little, hey, how you doing? A little refresh and... There you go. You have Galvatron in his cannon mode. Will I get this figure? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I've done it with RC. I've done it with Springer. I've done it with the boombox. Yeah, so there you go. There's the box looking all nice and pretty, and it looks great. I love the glare from the New York City skyline, but you can see the artwork on the side with uh, Galvatron holding the Matrix with the chain around his neck. I always like that. It's a nice image also got the culture shop culture fly. We got the uh, Matrix of Leadership to check out. That'll be a later video when I get back into town. Continuing on with the Michael Bay Transformers. You know, odds are I would just call this thing like Scorponok, of course. It's not called that. Is it interesting? It's pretty wild. Is it a cool design? Oh, yeah. 
Most definitely. Is it something I would ever get? No. No, not for me, but for those of you out there that love the Michael Bay Transformers or just, you know, I'll give it to them. A lot of times when they have like these movie designs, they really go all in, and it makes for a great robot, a great alt mode. It's pretty darn cool. So you got some silvers, you got some reds, you got some grays. I mean, he's pretty cool in robot mode, if you ask me. <laughs> I'm trying to be positive here. So, coming soon to the main line, we have the Deluxe Double Punch. So look for all of these relatively soon-ish. And as always, you can tell me what you think down in the comments below. That was just the one table. Then you got the other table, which basically showed you got these like kind of retro carded transformers. So this was the Bumblebee. Said what it says about these already. I really wish that uh, they would have kept that kind of old school G1 head on this Bumblebee. I think that that would have been really cool. That would have been a really great selling point for me because truth be told, I do think that the 86 Studio Series Bumblebee is better than the Netflix one. That's just my opinion. The gears, however, I just got the new gears, but I like this gears because it, I mean, it's got that retro kind of feel to it in the face. I think that that's really interesting. You've also got the N1 Starfighter Mandalorian Transformers, they're doing that mashup again. It's 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 cool. Not for me. Not something I want. And then you have the what the Transformers Cybertron kind of game reverse kind of thing with Skywarp. If you've seen the other Tetra Jets and everything else, you pretty much know what you're getting into. But nice purples, very cool overall. That's definitely a Skywarp. Skywarp, of course, known for his giant Skywarp club. That's something that all Skywarps need to come with. <laughs> I like the stances that they have on these things. They, that's one thing that I kind of talked to him about was in, in terms of a HasLab for a Transformers, I would love to see more of a battle scene. Things of a, of a of display nature where you can put your Transformers, you know, kind of build out that world kind of thing. Yes, the Walmart exclusive Mandalorian X N1 Starfighter. Just keep that in mind. You can only get that at Walmart, so... Better get on it. <laughs> Walk, don't run. <laughs> you can get it soon. It says what it says about Star Wars. It's just the the Mandalorian. It started off so well. Season one, woo. Season two, yeah. And then season three, well, that doesn't exist, does it? We don't talk about season three. So that will wrap it up for all of the Transformers that were on display. Moving into G.I. Joe, I'm gonna ask you to be kind on this. I did make sure to get the names so I don't goof those, but they did have quite a few ones that we've already seen, and then we got a couple of the newer, newer ones that are coming out on display. So these ones, I'll tell you all day, I think that if you are a G.I. Joe fan, you're really set. Now I know that's gonna go either way like some people will say oh they're not doing enough some people will say oh yeah i absolutely love it from someone who doesn't collect them and how i see it i mean you're getting crazy stuff it's pretty darn cool this one is the dreadnought xandar yes i will have to wait till the camera pulls back to tell you each one's name <laughs> we have the next one the mainline dial tone he's coming up with you guessed it a dial tone phone he's like the guy that has all the gadgetry something like that like i said i'm showing you the photos don't rag on me and i won't rag on you for the weird gi joe names and we'll call it even at the end of the day like i was saying though they really seem to be a labor of love they put in a ton of detail things that when they talk about at the panel i go yeah i i wouldn't have even noticed that but good on you good on you for putting that in there <laughs> They even talked about one the other day, like, oh, we made him sleeveless. I'm like, oh, that's, I would have never known. But there's a lot of people out there that would know that. Leather neck comes with a couple of accessories, the hands. You get the idea. We've seen that one before. This one is actually kind of cool looking. Kind of looks like a Marvel soldier, right? Something that would be in Hydra, something like that. This one is the Saw Viper. Bonus points if you can tell me what the SAW means for that Saw in the Viper. Then you have the, <laughs> this one's no longer a Saw, he's the Retro Viper. This was the one that I was mentioning that they said they took the 
the sleeves off, so he's bare-armed, thank God. In terms of arms, he comes with several guns, he's got the hands, he's got the stand, so that's pretty cool. So this will be on a retro card packaging. Those are pretty interesting. I've, I've said, if I've seen, you know, go in the store and I see Cobra Commander with that really cool VAC metal faceplate, I would definitely grab that. Haven't seen him yet. If I do, yeah, I would probably get that one. I think that he could go well with uh, Transformers. That's kind of how I like G.I. Joe in general. It's like, oh, that pairing, that kind of thing. Then you got this guy. He's got ammo for days, as you can clearly see. Also, much better poses than the Transformers. At least it makes more sense. When a, when a Transformer kind of crouches down and gets low, I'm just like, yeah. There is another question. How do you pose your Transformers? Are they in battle positions or are they just all standing there on the shelf? This one is the retro carded rock and roll because he's got ammo and he's ready to rock and roll. Ah, and then this one, I will impress you all. Uh, I know who Dr. Mindbender is. Partly because when he was an exclusive, everybody was consistently, hey, where's the links? Can we get him? Can we do this? And then I'm like, why is that dentist doctor man shirtless? Why is he wearing that? Plus, he's got the mustache and the monocle. He looks like the evil Monopoly man. And all he's missing is a top hat. Why has nobody out there created a top hat for Dr. Mindbender? I think that he desperately needs one, especially with... That shirt. Anyways, that was basically it for G.I. Joe. Thank you so much. I hope I didn't destroy anyone's <laughs> enjoyability of talking about Joe's. Then we had Star Wars. And this is where I'm going to tell you the track record as far as my tastes go for Star Wars. While I will tune in, I will watch. The Acolyte was very very tedious it was it really really was and it was one of those where i was just like oh this is gonna get worse before it gets better but it never got better i think we can all agree on that i know a lot of people are gonna say hey that's not cool man that, that was a great show you're entitled to your opinion it's totally cool at the end of the day i move on and i go well we have the skeleton crew now right so we can watch this hopefully it's good i'm looking at it going one I like that they're putting out, seemingly, the entire team or the entire cast of characters, including this adorable little elephant alien. It's kind of like, you know, Super Mario Bros. Wonder went elephant, now Star Wars is going elephant. It's like the sloth from a couple years ago, now we're going full-blown elephants. You got the kids, here's... <clears throat> now you got the kiddos here, and this is where... This becomes, well, Alien Romulus was interesting because of that cast of characters. Then you have these kids, which again, I know it's, and a lot of people say this, well, Star Wars is geared towards kids. All I hope, I sincerely hope, is that it blows my mind, right? It's like, oh man, this is actually a cool show. So hopefully they don't lean too far into it being like kitty, you know what I mean? Like, eh, like Star Wars cartoons, that kind of thing. Hopefully it's a compelling story. That's what I want to see from Star Wars. I actually like this Jordy LaForge one right here. I think that that's a cool character. That's a Star Wars character. So in terms of a group of characters, we'll see. <laughs> then you have Jude Law, who, I don't know, what is he, like a, a Ravager, Star-Lord, something like that? That's what it really looks like. That's what I think is a big problem with a lot of brands these days, Marvel, Star Everything is really kind of meshing together, and it kind of looks like, well, that could be like the Captain Marvel, what is it, Yon Rog, something like that from the movies? That could be him, right? It's definitely not Gigolo Joe from AI. It's Jude Law. He's got all kinds of weapons, the pistol, he's got the holder, the jacket looks nice, sure. This one, though, this one is pretty cool. He's like this wolfman dude. And I got to say, when they showed that at the panel, that's when I was like, oh, that's a really cool looking alien. That's what I want to see. The little blue elephant, it's a cool looking alien. This wolf man who's not Lack Sivrak, he's a pirate. Pirate Lack, you could just call him that. It's not the same character, but that's really interesting. And he comes with like a dozen weapons. So that's really cool. That would be the character out of everybody where I'm like, yeah, that's... 
that's kind of what I want to see. And then we have the basically retro carded clone commander Cody. He's going to come with the little hologram of Palpatine, and that's when he's going to order what? Order 66. So there you go. Star Wars for me, Power of the Force, the original trilogy. I liked Rogue One. That was pretty cool. And then you got. Uh, I like Solo. Solo and some problems, but I liked it overall. But uh, yeah, Commander Cody will be a Walmart exclusive. It's got that retro style Star Wars packaging, which, oh yeah, I definitely remember that on the shelves. In fact, I remember that being everywhere on the shelves because those toys didn't sell then. And well, um, <laughs> we'll see if they sell now. Then we have Ahsoka. Speaking of not selling now, ah, uh, I know. Well, you look at the store shelves. I'm really not making a joke. It's actually a for sure thing. But Sabine Wren, you got two options. Sabine on card, and then you got the Howler with Sabine, which is a box set, which looks like this. It's got inner swappable legs. It's got multiple points of articulation. You can move the feet. You can move the legs. You can have it sitting up and howling and laying down. It, it, it's alien dog stuff, right? You can have it where Sabine is riding the dang thing. Does it look cool? Yeah, it's always good to get more alien stuff. The problem is, though, is the 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 series or the brand that it's attached to. Like, I, I look at that and I go, that's a cool Star Wars animal. And then you go, oh, it's from Ahsoka. And you're like, ah, I didn't, didn't care for that show. And I think a lot of people are going to go, oh, why? Is it because of this, this, and this? And I'm like, no, in all honesty... When I say I don't like a show or I don't, you know, Star Wars, otherwise, it doesn't matter. It's usually the story where I'm just like, it's like, this is uninteresting, this breaks, and I am one for canon. I like to see it continue, you know? So there is weird stuff that they do all the time. It's like, just leave stuff alone. Just leave it alone. There's a million stories you could tell with Star Wars. Not everything has to be all in one go. Like, this character from 50,000 years ago meets this character from 50 years, you know, it's just like, come on, everything's tied in. We're talking over, you got Dr. Vaznan, you got the Snow Trooper, you got... <laughs> I like how this guy is Jod Na Nawood. Jod Na Nawood. <laughs> it's like Therm Scissor Punch. Remember that one? That That's the greatest Star Wars name of all time. We took a look at the Ghostbusters Hazlab. This, if I'm being honest, you see the photos, you see the videos, you see the panels. It's kind of like an overabundance of selling you on it, selling you on it, selling you on it. In real life, while, and I'm, I'm told that these are very early prototypes, so things may change, paint may change, that kind of deal. So they're not 100%. If you see one thing and you go, oh, oh that's wrong, that's wrong, odds are they're going to catch it. Everybody I was talking to on the Ghostbusters team is very passionate. Very passionate. I understand the inner workings. I understand when they can't do certain things. Don't blame the people that are just simply trying to work there. That being said, my heart goes with the real Ghostbusters. My heart goes with Mondo. Mondo is making the real Ghostbusters. That's what I've always wanted to see. You can see that there are Twinkies. They, <laughs> this is one of those things. They couldn't say that they're Twinkies legally. They had to call them like cake snacks. I'm like, ah. see, that's the kind of thing where I understand why, but at the same time, you kind of roll your eyes like, eh, just, okay, well, I get the idea. So you can see the Twinkies for comparisons if they were, if you, if you wanted to see that, if anything. The lights are cool. The car is huge. It's got three doors. It's got all the necessary elements for the Ecto-1. I did call it the Ecto-2 when you want to transfer all the stickers and everything else. It's Ecto-1A, but I call it Ecto-2. Then you have a very naughty librarian ghost. <laughs> I know she's doing the shh, but she's like, just to get this angle, like, mmm, like, hey, big boy, you gonna order this HasLab, that kind of thing. This looks cool. Again, my issue all the time with Ghostbusters, anything, especially when they do the movies, is that it's a very finite element to Ghostbusters 1 and 2. We'll keep it at that. It's always Slimer, the Librarian Ghost, the Scolari Brothers, you got Stay Puff, Slimer in general, it looks pretty cool. I don't ever think Slimer is able to be properly in, in toy form. He always looks different. He looks, even now, I'm looking at it, like it looks good. It still doesn't look like what he looks like to me in the movies. And I think that that's wild. It's kind of like what I was saying yesterday with Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice looks a certain way in the movies. When you translate it to plastic like a toy, it 
always looks different. There's those Twinkies again. They are, for some friggin' reason, still doing this early bird nonsense. It's their prerogative that they want to do it. So if you get the whole project funded, I think it's like 12,000 backers, you get Lewis Tully. The problem with that is that if it doesn't fund, then you're going to instantly look at it and go like, well, is it worth my money? I'm not getting like a really integral character. That's Rick Moranis. That's Louis Tully in the Egon Spangler uniform. They got that right. That's cool. You got the backpack. Here's one thing, though. I do not think that they changed the hoses on those proton packs. And when I was looking at the Plasma series, what, two or three years ago now, I don't think that they work proper. I would have loved if they're just on a string something that looks like that or a very much more malleable sort of tube that allows them to hold it it pushes against the figure again the ecto one is gorgeous it looks fantastic they did a fantastic job is it amazing to me yeah it looks awesome but again i want the real ghostbusters that's what i'm interested in now because i've never had that in totality we got the old kenner stuff but it was never like on model. So that's an honesty why I would go with Mondo. This is awesome. If you like the Ghostbusters, you like Ecto-1, this is the HasLab for you. No joke. Is it expensive? Honestly, for what you're getting, for all the electronics? No, I don't think, I think it's probably right on the money if you wanna go for the more deluxe set. Now, I did talk with Pat and the rest of the HasLab Ghostbuster team. They're very passionate. They are your nerds' nerds. They love all of this stuff. They worked with Sony. They worked with people that worked on the car. They were talking about this little green box that's on the top right there and its system functions and what it actually does and how there's a history to that. So yeah, I would say that the people making this are very much into it. I did ask them a few questions. For the for hire scene, they will have seven inner swappable plates. It's not something electronic that will move automatically. It's something you'll have to swap out. When you wanna go from Ecto-1 to Ecto-1A with the stickers, they're going to be a vinyl type uh, you know, adhesive that will go on and off easy peasy. The lights are bright. They are very cool. The siren is very cool. The fact that you get the Ghostbuster 2 Ghostbusters. Honestly, it made me laugh yesterday when they said, hey, you got the, the thermos and the balloon. That's hilarious. I think that that's a great accessory for these Ghostbusters. So you got Egon right there in the darker jumpsuit, which... I guess that was supposed to be back in the day, a call to the real Ghostbusters having various jumpsuits. You've got the Neutrona Blasts. You have the Mood Slime. That all looks good. Although I will say, should the Mood Slime be a little bit more purplish or is that good? You tell me down in the comments. Peter's got the toaster. Then you've got Ray and Winston with the slime cannons, which they got the vests. Everything looks good. Everything's painted well. I do like the expressions. I like the likenesses on these figures. At the end of the day, as of this video, as of writing it, I am still on the fence about whether or not I will back this. I don't know. I might change my mind later on, but as of right now, as I said, I'm leaning more towards Mondo with the real Ghostbusters. But again, I'll tell you, if this is your thing, if you're a fan of Ghostbusters, this would probably be the ultimate take home. You even have the gurney with the proton packs on it. The Lewis Tully thing being an early bird, <laughs> that's why I hope it funds. You get the full 12,000, you know, in the first two weeks, and then you get the figure, that kind of thing. I hope it funds because then it's like, it's like a negative thing on top of it. So all in all, I'll tell you this, seeing it in hand, the pictures don't do it justice. The, you know, the digital renderings don't do it justice. It's quite impressive. And yeah, I did talk to a few people. They go, I already ordered two. I got one for Ecto-1 and one to make it into the Ecto-1A. And I was like, yeah, they'll, no. I mean, it's expensive, but Ghostbuster fans show up to HasLabs. I think that's where it seems to be the most successful because it's definitely not happening on store shelves, unfortunately. So in totality, you get the Librarian Ghost, you get the Slimer, you get, hopefully, Lewis Tully, you get the Four Busters, you get the Backpacks and the Swap Out Slime and the Neutrona. The lights are cool. Like I said, they're bright. Everything is Ghostbusters. If you are a Ghostbusters fan, this would be the Ghostbusters thing to get. Whether or not 400 bucks is your price point, 
that, I leave it up to you. But I digress, in person, it's definitely a presence. And yeah, I would see that any Ghostbusters fan would love to have this on their shelves. Then we moved on to the Marvel Legends series for Secret Wars. These were all out on display. I actually really like these. And I was talking with a few people there and they all seem to agree. When it comes to Marvel, let's just use the MCU. When you have those characters and they're in such bland costumes or they're in regular everyday street clothes, this Wolverine with the colors that you see right here, that's Wolverine. I even like that he's smiling. I like that a lot. The extra unmasked head portrait is pretty bad. <laughs> it's, I don't, I don't know. He looks puffy. He looks like he had too much dairy the night before. There's something weird there. You also have Captain America, Steve Rogers. I think that that looks great as well. I'm kind of bummed because I missed that whole 20th anniversary cap. It's not like it's the end of the world, but this one will do just fine. I'll have a shield on him and we'll be set to go. The one thing though about this head portrait, I see what they were going for, but I really feel like he's, it's kind of like a, a cringe smile. Like if that's, a, he's like, he's, he's thinking about smiling, but he doesn't know if he's really into it just yet. The star of the wave for me is getting the Beyonder. I think that that is awesome. Now I will point out that I would love the Spider-Man the Animated Series version of the Beyonder. I think that's the one that I would love to see. But I love that he has like the battle world in his hand. Like that's kind of cool. He's got extra hands. She-Hulk was there just to kind of show you the scale between her and the other characters. And Titania, Titania, <laughs> whatever it is. Anyways, she looks cool. That's another highlight for me because Beyonder and Titania, are, they're just two new characters. We've never gotten them. That's not to say that getting Iron Man, Spider-Man, Captain America, Wolverine aren't a bad thing. People will buy them. I myself, I think they're pretty cool overall, but they are characters we've had time and time again. When you get new characters, that's really where I'm at. This one being Iron Man. Now it's supposed to be Jim Rhodes under the armor at the time. That's like his Secret Wars kind of secrets. <laughs> They're leaning into Tony Stark for this. He's got roller skates. He's got weapons. I like the colors. Again, the colors really pop. That's Marvel. That's classic Marvel to me. That's what I want to see. These will fly off shelves, I guarantee you. And then, you, of course, you have the black costume symbiote Spider-Man. The eyes are wrong. I know. I will agree with you on that. They should have been smaller. It's just kind of one of those repainted heads. I like the more squinty eyed. I think that that works a lot better. And the triangle sort of white patches on the back of the hands is accurate if you look at the covers. So there you go. You have the entirety of the, I, th I would say, first wave of Secret Wars. I'm sure they always do two. And then, of course, we have the Marvel's Sentinel. So this will be $175. It is not a HasLab. It is a kind of made to order like Dragon Man. It is quite impressive. I really like it a lot. And when I say that, I loved X-Men 97 season one. Fingers crossed they do not ruin it with all the behind the scenes nonsense that they just had to do. Everyone who played a part in that, thanks. Couldn't just make a show. And I mean like everybody, like, you know, couldn't keep it together for us uh, fans who love this kind of stuff. He's got blast effects. He looks very animated. I've heard people say it looks very childish, toyish, right? I will agree with you in some ways. It kind of looks like the 3.75 inch Sentinel that came out recently with the other uh, smaller figures for X-Men 97. This to me is the Sentinel I've always wanted. I have Master Mold. I have every other Sentinel that they have put out. This one though, when I think of Sentinels, when I first saw Sentinels, X-Men 97, when he goes up against Jubilee, awesome, just awesome. Now, my only complaint here is that it does not come with the tendrils. And the tendrils are integral because if you're telling me this is X-Men 97, which is X-Men the Animated Series, what was the first thing that those Sentinels did, right? It kind of did the whole tendril thwip thing and wrapped up Jubilee and held her prisoner. That would have been kind of cool. Also to have the smoke bomb that he launches out of his hands and Jubilee falls and Cyclops tells him to get down. Those are episode, very animated show, specific things that I like to see if you're going to do something like that. 175 for this, 
I think they should have done it at 150, and it would have made that like, oh, I could get two for 300. It would just would have clicked that much more. More pieces would have been lovely. I love the extra head portrait. I love the blast effects. I love the overall look. It's very animated. You can see the portholes right there. Maybe you could put the tendrils from the other one in this. I doubt it. Probably a lot bigger as far as the hands go. But yeah, that would have been something to add. But in either case, I think if you're a fan of Hasbro brands, there's something for you in general. So that wraps it up. Thank you so much to Hasbro for having me for the breakfast. Lovely to see all you awesome people out there. You know who you are. Great talking all these great brands with you. Just New York Comic Con in general. Like I said, go ahead, enter the contest. I wish you all luck, and I'll have a lot more videos coming this weekend. Until then, though, I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.